Hi guys, it's July 18, 2018, the video that I was referring to and the videos that I posted yesterday. I need to split it up because it would be way, way too long. But I am now doing that infrastructure video that I talked of a couple of months ago and never got around to it. I have said, wow, I am not uh, really functioning all that well and um, can't seem to get done what I have said or need to get done. But did anybody see this? Donald Trump says U.S. could re-enter Paris climate deal. This was a couple of months ago. I'm not seeing uh, very many people posting on that announcement, but also on Trump's infrastructure plan. Okay, this is a plan to privatize our national infrastructure, which has always been a national responsibility. This plan is turning over our infrastructure to private entities. 1.5 trillion he calls for, but and I will link below to everything. So, if you don't believe what I am saying, you can read the entire plan, which is what I did, the entire thing, and it's really boring, but he mentions public-private partnerships only once, but if you read through this and analyze it, you get, wow, he is turning over transportation, airports, passenger, passenger rail, ports, waterways, flood control, water supply, hydropower, water resources, drinking water facilities, wastewater facilities, storm water facilities, everything to private entities. And out of that $1.5 trillion, only $100 billion will come from the federal government, but it's a shell game. If you know that there have been cuts in transportation, water, energy, and other projects, and couple that with essentially zeroing out the highway trust fund that states and cities relied on, the cuts approximate to about uh, 200 billion and well it's kind of confusing here because it says 200 and then 100 billion but it is a shell game. shell game this is a windfall for that private corporation called the federal government and it is a windfall it's the gift that keeps on giving to private investors um, so with all of those cuts that the federal government was not giving to states and cities. Now it says it's going to be giving a hundred billion. Uh, essentially the federal government is not giving anything to this infrastructure plan. Um, and I'm going to pause you for a sec. Sorry, it was that lawnmower, but the federal government gets away with paying virtually nothing towards this infrastructure. So who's going to be paying for it? You, along with private investors. And boy, has he really just these incentives in this plan are the incentives, the $100 billion will be administered by the Department of Transportation, Army Corps of Engineers, and the EPA. So, our federal agencies, every one of them, is implementing the United Nations Agenda 2030 plan. Department of Transportation public-private partnerships. Public-private partnerships. Federal Highway Administration. Elaine Chow, 
who is Trump's appointee. All of these people are just as corrupt as Trump is. He does not care that these people are corrupt or they have uh, committed crimes. He just appoints the people who are going to get the job done. And what is that job? It is the job for the United Nations Agenda 2030. So Elaine Chow comes from Wells Fargo. She gets that uh, golden parachute from Wells Fargo Company, which is $5 million, while she is the head of the Department of Transportation. And when you see that the head of the Department of Transportation is uh, one of those resilient public-private partnership kind of heads, and she is administering the monies for the infrastructure plan, but she comes from Wells Fargo, and she got that golden parachute. Who will benefit from that infrastructure plan? Wells Fargo. The EPA, Community-Based Public-Private Partnerships, Water Infrastructure, and Resiliency Finance Center. Public-Private Investments, Financing Resilient and Sustainable Water Infrastructure. That's the EPA, the Green Infrastructure Agency that will be administering the funds for our infrastructure. How about the Army Corps of Engineers building resilience? So you put these three people in charge of administering the really zero sum but the hundred billion. Where do you think that they're going to be putting that money. Well, first of all, they're going to be rewarding, no doubt, their friends, but they will approve contracts that are going to be resilient, sustainable, um, it's, you know, look at, you know, the corruption is unbelievable. The EPA. Now, Scott Pruitt just resigned. But he was banned from the ba banking industry. And I'm not going to go into the details of how corrupt these people are. But Trump didn't care. You know, he's not putting in moral characters to lead our agencies. Uh, the black box of EPA's new chemical reviews just got a whole lot blacker. Scott Pruitt had scrapped the scheduled ban of a pesticide that harms kids' brains. But it's not just Scott Pruitt. Who else did Trump appoint to the EPA. Nancy Beck, a chemical industry bigwig, high level chemical safety position at the Environmental Protection Agency. This is who Trump sticks in that level, uh, sticks in that position. The title Deputy Assistant Administrator of the Office of Chemical Safety and Pollution Prevention. She comes from the American Chemistry Council, that powerful lobby representing Dow Chemical, DuPont, Monsanto, Exxon Mobil Chemical, Chevron Phillips Chemical, Bayer, and other chemical companies. So she's going to be, and she has been, making the decisions that will protect you, your family, the environment from potential risks from pesticides and toxic chemicals. Three things you should know. She has helped 
Kraft, the chemical industry's political agenda for years. A House committee once called her out for very disturbing attempts to undermine EPA science. She's been a vocal critic of the EPA's chemical safety findings, despite her own fundamentally flawed approach to chemical safety. All right, Trump, please understand this, guys. He is no different. And just because he is speaking what you want to hear, just like Obama spoke those pretty words, you cannot trust proven liars. What is it with Americans? They trust liars. And they just listen to the words. And then they're all excited. So you listen to, you know, the, just imagine Trump. Trump is at a rally. He is speaking to the American people. And he says, my administration, it plans to address the traditional infrastructure, but it also goes further like roads, bridges, and airports, that's the traditional, but, and I'm speaking like Trump speaks, um, but I'm going to be addressing drinking and wastewater systems and waterways and water resources and energy and rural infrastructure and public lands and veterans hospitals and the brownfield and Superfund sites that are notoriously corrupt, but, but he wouldn't say that. The reform set forth in my plan, it's going to strengthen the economy, make our country more competitive, reduce the cost of goods and services for American families, and enable Americans to build their lives on top of the best infrastructure in the world. And everybody will begin to clap and stand up and scream, make America great again, USA, USA, USA. And nobody will look into the plan. How long can you continue to be duped? It's essential to look into what these people are doing instead of just listening to what they say. And this goes on. It, it just, it's endless in this country. All right, so. The incentive program, which uh, will be funded $100 billion, will be administered by Agenda 2030 people. Um, now, the $100 billion, states, local governments, they are only going to get 20% of that $100 billion. That, that, and that is in the plan cannot exceed 20%, which means that state and local governments have to fund 80% of the $1.5 trillion. 80%. Now, we know that state and local governments all over the country are suffering. So many can't pay their pensions, and, and they're increasing taxes because they can't... Uh, because they just need the money and well we all know that states have two budgets one they hide from the public and one they show the public oh we're out of money we're out of money we're out of, we got to increase taxes um, well that's what they're going to be doing with this infrastructure plan but Trump has these these uh, incentives. He's encouraging these government officials to seek new revenue streams, higher taxes, user fees, bonds, and public-private partnerships. Um, now, private investors have one goal in mind maximize profits. Companies, corporations have a fiduciary duty to increase profits. 
So there's not much profit in roads, bridges, improving drinking water systems, sewer systems. It can only be profitable if those private investors have control over that infrastructure. And that is essentially what is taking place. Trump's plan explicitly paves the way for greatly expanded privatization of our infrastructure. Wealthier regions will benefit. Poor regions will not benefit. Investors, they're looking to maximize their profits. Where do they maximize their profits? In wealthier regions. What are those wealthier regions? The mega regions. They are the America 2050 mega regions. The plan gives authority to sell public assets. Assets that are public, which means the assets that Trump has given the authority to sell off, those assets, it was your tax dollars that built, operated, and maintained. What a windfall for our federal government, which is a private corporation anyway. Um, but you get screwed. So your tax dollars built, operated, maintained those assets, and he's selling them off to private entities. Some of those assets that are mentioned in this plan, the Ronald Reagan and Dulles Airport, the Tennessee Valley Authority, which provides electricity for I think about nine million, which is also a corporate agency of the United States government. The Southwestern Authority, which was established by the Department of Interior and now is operated uh, out of the Department of Energy, I believe. It provides electricity to Arkansas, Missouri, Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas. Put it in the hands of a private entity. Your electricity costs will skyrocket. And it also just generally gives authority to sell public assets that would be better managed by state or local governments or private entities. How many state or local governments can afford to purchase these public assets? It will be private entities. Interstate highways, private investment means private control. Interstate rest areas, Trump removes the current prohibition against commercial activity. So you know those little uh, rest areas that just have you know a bathroom and maybe some um, vending machines. Now you will see a McDonald's transportation. He removes barriers and encourages private financing. Transit eliminates constraints for using public-private partnerships. Airports eliminates the limit on airport privatization which limits the number and size of private airports. Water, well of course water, allows the clean water um, state revolving funds to subsidize privately owned treatment plants. 
removes regulations, which reduces environmental protections. So, once again, your tax dollars go to subsidize a private entity who is making a huge profit off of what you subsidize. But we don't have any clean water anymore. Reducing regulations that allow these private entities to control these uh, treatment plants? Really? Our water will only get more toxic. He expands the authority of the Army Corps of Engineers to enter into private contracts, which has never happened before. To enter into private contracts to use federal funds for construction, maintenance, operations, and expands the contract time to 50 years, allowing long-term privatization. So, once again, he hands to private investors money that you pay to the IRS for these private entities to construct, maintain, and operate. They get profit, you get to pay for the construction, maintenance, and operation. Wow! VA, the Veterans Affairs Agency, creates a pilot program to exchange VA land or facilities for lease of space for private facilities allowing private corporations to control both public land and build and operate privatized VA facilities public lands to generate new revenue from energy development allowing energy companies to exploit what's left of our public lands. He also, uh, one of the incentives, uh, he's essentially instructing these state and local governments to go out there, get private funding, and, and allow these PABs, private activity bonds, give it over to these private investors, these bonds. But PABs have always had a stipulation. And these bonds, they must have public attributes. In other words, you get these private activity bonds to these private investors, but they must have they must be used for some public good. Trump, no, he expands their use. So now they can be used for private investment. They can have private attributes. But he also maintains their tax-exempt status. The whole thing is, hey, let me give gifts to my buddies, these investors. Let me screw the American people by privatizing this infrastructure. Let me, pay, uh, let me get the American people to pay for it. State and local governments. New revenue, re revenue streams. You can increase taxes. You can get the American people to pay for this 1.5 infrastructure plan and the plan won't benefit them it will benefit private companies, corporations, investors. Does this sound like a good plan to you? It doesn't to me. And it's unfortunate that uh, yeah, this guy 
is just like all the rest. And we have an awful lot of people who are supporting this guy. I don't get it. Um, I don't get it. But we do the same old, same old until it destroys us. And then we can't do anything. And that's exactly what we are doing. So that's the infrastructure plan that may very well go through next year. You're going to pay royally. It's going to hurt the country because all of these monies will be going into mega regions. It will be steered into mega regions. You will be subsidizing private investors who will be profiting from it. But the control, look, these private investors are not just going to be investing in infrastructure in this country unless they are going to be getting great returns, which means, and the only way that they will get those great returns is by our federal government giving them control. So you can look forward to increased taxes, increased bills for water, electricity, gas. You can look forward to increased costs, your transportation costs, tolls, and whatever rules that these private investors want to institute for, oh, let's say on the interstate rest area or the highways. All of it is screwing Americans. So please, please don't just listen to people, especially those who have proven themselves liars. Please watch what they do and get into the details of whatever it is that they propose. Because if you don't do that, then yeah, when you do get screwed, you can look at yourself in the mirror and say, I screwed myself. All links are below.